Milico wouldn't hire me. If I walked into Masters and Demi Life in 1987 and said, my name is Gary Cornegate, South Central LA, obviously I'm African American, I got kicked out of high school, I got brothers that are pharmaceutical reps in the community. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, get that one, okay? Most, most white people take a while. What's wrong with that? Will <laughs> <laughs> you work advisor? Well, nah. <laughs> Y'all throwing up here in Utah. <laughs> so if I went to Masters in Dimity, right, and said, hey, I'm going to put an application in, they can say, what's your qualification? Yeah. Do you have a college education? No, I don't. Now, why would you want to work for Masters in Dimity Life Insurance Company? We have no position for you, maybe other than the mailroom. If I went to First American National Securities, that's investment. Ooh. They wouldn't even let me in the parking lot. <laughs> So guess what I did? A.L. Williams said, we'll give you a chance to be somebody. We don't care who you are, where you come from. We don't need to see your resume. They didn't ask for no proof of high school diploma. They said, we'll give you a chance to be somebody. So I enrolled in A.L. Williams. And then once I got involved in A.L. Williams, guess what they did? Linked me to the companies that wouldn't hire me. <laughs> You don't get it yet. Because yep. most people here, in this room here, you got involved in Primerica Financial Services, and our insurance underwriter's name is Primerica Life. Our investment company is Primerica Investment Inc. Am I right? Our marketing company is just called Primerica. That's our parent company, should I say. So now you're confused. <laughs> because we gave you the same name. And you're going, what, what do we do? I knew when I got involved in A.L. Williams what we were about. We were actually a distribution company. We knew it. We knew we weren't insurance agents. We didn't want to be insurance agents. We knew we weren't stockbrokers. We knew we weren't financial planners. We would never say that word. That's like a curse word to say financial advisor, financial planner. That was a curse word because we knew what we were. We were a distribution team of pissed off consumers that want to basically stick it to Wall Street. And the reason that you're here today, whether you like it or not, the reason you're here today, because of A.L. Williams decided to take a different approach and give a different kind of person a chance to be somebody. And that's why you're here. See, when I got in the business 27 years ago, bankers would never do A.L. Williams. Today we have people in the room, oh, I'm a banker. And I'm not knocking that, but I'm just letting you know we were not attractive to those guys. Insurance aid would never leave State Farm and come to Primerica. That's no way in the world would a, a mortgage guy do Primerica 27 years ago. Because in their mind, that's like, that's like selling used cars. We would never work for A.L. Williams. Oh my God, they hired anybody. Look, they got Gary. <laughs> Thank God A.L. Williams said, we don't care who you are, we don't care where you're from, we're going to give you a chance to be somebody. But I got news for you guys. Everybody in this room is under an A.L. Williams guy, a gal. And all of us are millionaires ten times over. And you're under us. So what you got to do, now, don't love you. Some people think like, you didn't clap, man. I, ain't, man, I don't want to hear that. He's like, well, front row, like, man, I ain't clap for that crap. <laughs> I ain't going to some black guy. <laughs> From the hood. <laughs> what would my friends think? <laughs> <laughs> got to have a little bit of sense of humor with me. It's going to be fine. <laughs> don't worry. When you get success, you get to come talk to my team. Right. In South Central. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell your Utah story, okay? <laughs> and, you, and you can say what I say. Where are the white people? <laughs> well, I come back and go, wow, there's actually one. There was one black here. Then you go, how you doing, my brother? <laughs> Love you. <laughs> I got off the plane in the airport. I counted. There was two blacks. <laughs> when I walked to, to bring this car, I counted. There was one black museum, there was one black guy, there was another black guy working. I go, oh, cool, okay. Utah is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the topic today is really distribution, recruiting, understanding it. First of all, you need to first of all understand one thing. 
You can never be embarrassed about your history. You understand know, that? You can never be embarrassed about your history. You are a part of something great. That's right. You should get the book, Coach. It's the A.L. Williams story. You need to know that story because that's the story of your, your bloodline. We didn't start with publicly traded company, Primera, you know, big company, $2 billion a year. We pay $500 million. Good. We didn't start like that. It's okay to start your presentation have you heard of Primerica, but you know what really be a good presentation? To recruit the right kind of people? Here's a great presentation. Hi, sir. What's your name? Doug Reader. Doug Gary Cornegate. What I'm going to show you right now, the insurance agency is going to hate me, but you're going to love me. I'm your insurance agent's worst enemy. Have you, heard against, have you heard about Muslims against strong drivers? Have you heard of MAP? Yes. We're the Muslims against strong drivers against the financial industry. We don't like them and they don't like us. That's how you start the presentation. And the right kind of person go, oh, I like this guy. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. This is going to be a good presentation. Oh, honey, I told you I didn't like your brother who's in short <laughs> Right? And, and that's how we start our presentation some 27 years ago. Because we had to start with the story first. Because we knew if I didn't tell you the story, the State Farm guy would put a spin on the story. Today you start with, have you heard of Prime Erica? Well, New York Stock has changed. You have 100,000 lives represented. We started in 1977. You don't even mention Art Williams' name. And that's like not mentioning your grandfather's name because you're embarrassed. So how are you going to be a great recruiter, Mark, if you don't know the story? You got to tell the story. You got to tell your story. Everybody here has a rags to riches story, except for my son. <laughs> <laughs> and Brenda's kids and Michelle's kids and all these rich primary kids, their story is different. They got to kind of put a spin on it. One time, get up now look, we live in this uppy neighborhood, right? He's been raised there his whole life. And one time I heard him talk to another black kid, you know. This black kid, you know, from the inner city, you know, Gary's not from the inner city, but I guess Gary, he's trying to one-up Gary, Gary's trying to one-up him, and little Gary's like maybe nine years old or ten or something like that, he's telling this guy from the hood, yeah, I'm from South Central L.A., and I'm in there listening in the room, I go, he's lying, I'm from South Central, don't tell my story, you're from Al Coloma. <laughs> He's trying to act like he's all hard up from South Central. You ain't from South Central. If I take you to South Central and drop you off, you'll pee in your pants, right? <laughs> so tell the company stories and tell your story. Your story can be something that's, hey, you know what? Who would give a single mom a chance? No, who would give a plumber a chance? This company did. Now, if you're a rich kid, right, you go, well, my dad was a real estate guru, what about me? But you got to come in, you got to come in differently. Hey, my father was a real estate guru, he owned a chain of hotels, and guess what I didn't want to do? I didn't want to live off of my dad, but I wanted a lot from him, I wanted to create my own success. I didn't want to be like the Kardashians and the Hiltons, I wanted to start from scratch, but I'm still going to get daddy's check too. <laughs> tell the story, tell the story, so tell the company story, do it quickly. Okay? You'll attract the right kind of person. Sunday, I had a potluck at my house with one of my RVP's teams, right? I'd use my house sometimes. I allowed them to come and have their potlucks at my home to expose their team to my lifestyle. Then some lady sits there, and she says, Well, I got involved in Primerica. I got to be honest with you. I really haven't been working it like I probably should be because I graduated summa cum laude. I go, Okay. And she goes, and I have a degree in business. She goes, in my culture, you know, I'm Japanese, and my culture, no, she's Filipino, I'm sorry, my culture, you know, they strict on going to school, getting education, getting a job, and I don't want to present this to anybody in my family because they would never do this. And I go, wow, so you went to college? She goes, yes. She goes, and no disrespect, but I went to your meeting, and everybody there is nothing but a bunch of 19 and 22 year olds. And I'm not racist. I'm really not. That means that means they are. Okay. You know, I'm really not. Okay, but there were all Mexicans there. Now, by the way, she's in a room with about 80 Mexicans. Okay. 
And so here's what I said to her. I go, so you graduated from college? She goes, yes. And you have a degree? Right. And you graduated cum laude, which is the highest level of your education? Yes, I'm like valedictorian. Yeah, okay. So guess what? You're so smart, you're dumb again. I go, let me tell you why. Because, now, I actually did this. I go, if you're Mexican, please raise your hand. Right? And not, not everybody's hand went up. I go, if you're not Mexican, raise your hand. We have people from Ecuador, El Salvador. I go, so you're so smart, you're dumb again. You just offended people. I go, see what education did to you? It messed you up. You lost your common sense.